guilty. Nurse Lucy Letby murdered seven babies. She's also been convicted of attempting to kill more at the Countess of Chester Hospital. The police are widening their inquiries. This has been a long and emotional journey for all of the families involved in this case. I speak on behalf of the entire prosecution team when I say that all of their babies will forever be in our hearts. Hello, Lucy, is it? Yes. Hello, my name is Chester Priest. Look, it's Stephen, two seconds. Oh, uh, yes? Yeah, thank you. The early morning knock at the door as detectives closed in on the nurse at her home in Blaken. Accused of the most unthinkable crimes, Letby was calm and faked concern for the babies. Did you have any concerns that there was a rise in mortality? Yes. Important questions now for the Countess of Chester Hospital. The government's ordered an independent inquiry. Consultants have told us they were shocked their worries about Letby were ignored. I know what we paediatricians were concerned about and those concerns were being fed through to the senior managers. I think they need to be asked and they need to justify uh, their decisions. And the police investigation continues with thousands of births of both the Countess and Liverpool women's now being reviewed. Good evening. No one wanted to believe it could happen. Lucy Letby was trusted with the most fragile little lives, but she betrayed that trust to become the worst serial killer of children in modern times. She murdered seven newborn babies and tried to kill six more while she was working on the neonatal unit at the Countess of Chester Hospital. She injected them with air, overfed them with milk and poisoned them with insulin. Just after the verdict, a statement was read out on behalf of their families. Over the past seven to eight years, we've had to go through a long, torturous and emotional journey. From losing our precious newborns and grieving their loss, seeing our children who survived, some of whom are still suffering today, to being told years later that their death or collapse might be suspicious. Nothing can prepare you for that news. Today, Justice has been served, and a nurse who should have been caring for our babies has been found guilty of harming them. But this justice will not take away from the extreme hurt, anger and distress that we've all had to experience. Yes, the toughest of times for the families, as we could see there, an emotional time too for the senior police officers who brought Letby to justice. Mel Barham is at Manchester Crown Court, and Mel, it must have been incredibly tense as those verdicts were read out. Yes, and it's only now that we can reveal that we've actually had verdicts over several days in this case, but only now are we allowed to report those. Lucy Letby being found guilty of seven murders and uh, six attempted murders. And when those two first two guilty verdicts came through, Lucy Letby fought back tears as she sat in the dock wiping her eyes. When the second lot of verdicts came through, there was absolutely no reaction at all. She sat in the dock staring at the floor. For the final verdicts, she refused to even come up from her cells to hear those verdicts. It was in stark contrast to her parents who've been here every single day of this trial. Her mother was howling in the public gallery, sobbing, you can't be serious, this can't be right, whilst Lucy's dad put his head in his hands. Meanwhile, there were gasps from some of the families of her victims as they comforted each other as the foreman delivered those verdicts. 22 days and over 110 hours the jury has deliberated in what has been a quite extraordinary trial, one of the longest murder trials in UK history. We have heard incredibly complex and detailed medical evidence, and at times some of that evidence has been deeply upsetting. But perhaps what is the most shocking about this case is not simply how many victims there were, but just who those victims were. They were tiny, premature babies, some of them just hours old when they were attacked, attacked by the very person who should have been caring for them, a nurse turned serial killer. 
In a ward filled with new life was a nurse intent on death. Lucy Letby was operating in plain sight. She was in a position of trust. Parents trusted her, her colleagues trusted her, and that cover of trust allowed her to commit these offences. Nobody at that time would even imagine that somebody was harming babies on that unit. We broke down when we heard that Lucy, that she harmed our kids. She took everything, our joy, happiness. The whole time, Lucy let be portraying the image of a caring, dedicated nurse, even after being arrested for multiple murders. They told me that there would be a lot more deaths in them. I feel like just some deaths there, but a lot of them. Did you have any concerns that there was a rise in the mortality rate? Yes. But behind the facade was a serial killer the jury finding her guilty of murdering seven babies and attempting to murder six more. Her victims, tiny, helpless babies who should have had a future. Premature newborns, twins, triplets. We can't tell you their names, but each one a much-loved son or daughter who Lucy Letby inexplicably chose to harm. There won't be anybody who's worked on this investigation that will come out of this the same person that they were before, just because of the impact that it's had on everybody. As a little girl, she appeared the picture of innocence. Lucy Letby grew up in Hereford, an only child, and told the court she always wanted to work with children. She'd been the first in her family to go to university. She studied at Chester and said her career had meant everything. Her job, she said, was her life, but it was the lives of others she was snatching away. It was January 2012 that a newly qualified nurse Letby began working on the neonatal ward at the Countess of Chester Hospital. In early 2015, she completed a specialist training course, meaning she was one of very few staff qualified to care for the sickest of babies. But just weeks later, a series of unexplained deaths and near fatalities would begin. And over the course of a year, these sudden and unexpected emergencies caused panic on the wards. Lucy Letby used her skills as a nurse to deliberately sabotage the baby's care. Some were just hours old, others were doing well and ready to go home. In one case, she tried to kill a baby girl on four separate attempts, injecting air into her tiny body, leaving her crying inconsolably. After another attempt to kill the baby girl known as Child Eye, Letby stood in the doorway of the darkened nursery, the cot shrouded in a canopy, and remarked to a colleague she looked pale. When the fellow nurse turned on the lights, she saw Child Eye on the point of death, not breathing. Her behaviour after Child Eye's death was described as both bizarre and inappropriate smiling to the baby's distraught parents as she recollected the baby's first bath, then sending them this sympathy card, writing, We will never forget her, thinking of you today and always. Two of her victims were twin boys, born premature but healthy. Just hours after attempting to kill one of them, she then attacked his brother, known as Baby M, who out of the blue simply collapsed. I saw doctors around the trolley and they're just pumping his heart like like a rag doll, really. I said, oh, my God, what happened? And one of the nurses said to me, I've not done anything. I've not done anything. And, and Lucy was behind her and she was standing very calm and cool. After the incident happened, her body language and her behaviour totally changed. She was very annoyed with us. The court heard she'd often strike on night shifts with fewer people around or just after parents had left, persuading staff that these utterly abnormal collapses were just a run of bad luck. But this was not just a constellation of coincidences. Every single baby collapse had one common denominator, Lucy Letby. It was like lightning in a clear blue sky. You know, they, they were expected to do well. They were not that premature. It was puzzling for the consultants to see them dying the way that they did. And not just dying, but also where it was impossible to bring them back. 
The tipping point for staff came in June 2016. That bee had returned from a holiday in Ibiza to something special, identical triplets. They'd been born in good condition, but let be struck, killing two of the boys within 24 hours of each other. The parents begged doctors to take their surviving triplet to another hospital. A paediatrician agreed, believing by then that Lucy Letby posed a mortal danger to him. He was moved and survived. Letby was removed from the unit, but it would be more than two years before police finally arrested her. Hello, Lucy, is it? Yes. Hello, my name is Chester, please. Look, it's Stephen, two seconds. Oh, uh, yes. This was the first of three times she was arrested. Looking dazed, officers lead her out of her home in handcuffs in the early hours of the morning. A nurse now under suspicion for multiple murders. But these were crimes that left little trace. With no smoking gun, no witnesses, the police investigation would be far from easy. Operation Hummingbird would become one of the biggest and most complex investigations ever undertaken by Cheshire Police, with more than 2,000 witnesses and half a million pages of medical records to trawl through. We started from a place of trying to identify if a crime had occurred initially. We hoped that it hadn't, and it was difficult to accept that maybe it had in the early days because how could you ever imagine that somebody would do this? It still is difficult to accept that we've not been able to answer all of the questions that the families have had and the obvious question of why. Ultimately, only Lucy Letby can answer that question. Throughout the trial, Letby protested her innocence, claiming she'd only ever done her best for the babies in a unit short-staffed and failing. But the prosecution said she enjoyed the drama, the control, the extremity of grief she was causing to others. And the truth was revealed in a cryptic, chaotic confession. In notes found at her home that read, I am evil, I did this. I killed them on purpose because I'm not good enough to care for them. It would be this note and a host of other incriminating evidence that police would piece together to build their case, like the hundreds of confidential handover sheets found at her home, the falsifying of medical notes in an attempt to give herself an alibi and create the impression the babies were already ill, and the Facebook searches for parents of those she'd harmed, one search even on Christmas Day. It's part of a puzzle, it's part of evidence often referred to of joining up the dots but it, it, it's more in this case it was more putting the dots on a page before even joining them up really. When we laid it all together and we had one person who could have been there, nobody else. Was there ever any doubt in your mind that she was guilty? No, I think she's exactly what she says, she's evil. Letby's parents came to court every day to listen to the evidence against their daughter, as did the parents of the babies she harmed. Baby M and his brother Baby L both survived. They're now healthy seven-year-olds, but their parents say their family's been changed forever. She's taken lives. She's tried to take other babies' lives. So whatever sentence she gets, it's not going to be enough. This trial has lasted more than 10 months, longer than the baby's lives she snatched away. Lucy Letby is now the worst child serial killer in modern history. But tonight, as she faces many years in prison, there are still so many questions left unanswered. Why did she do it? And how was she able to continue killing for so long? Exactly. Uh, Mel, 17 babies involved in this case overall, but the jury didn't reach verdicts for all of them. That's right, Lucy. Uh, Lucy Letby was cleared of a further two counts of attempted murder and the jury were unable to come to a decision about six further counts involving three more babies, which means there is potential for a retrial there. But as he discharged the jury, the judge, Justice Goss, described this as a most distressing and upsetting case and he thanked the jury for their care and diligence. On the court steps behind me a little earlier today, 
Monday, the Crown Prosecution Service said finally justice had been done. They said parents had been exposed to Lucy Letby's morbid curiosity and her fake compassion, describing how she deceived her colleagues and concealed her crimes by varying the different methods that she used to attack these babies in her care. And Mel, we've learned today that police are investigating the entire footprint of Lucy Letby's career. That's right. Police say they will now review the, uh, the care of 4,000 babies, not just at the Countess of Chester Hospital, but also Liverpool Women's Hospital, where she did a placement. But they are at pains to point out that that doesn't mean they are investigating 4,000, just that they will review all of those admissions to make sure that nothing was missed. Well, Lucy Letby will be sentenced here at Manchester Crown Court on Monday. It is unlikely she will be released from prison for a very long time if at all. OK, Mel, thank you. Well, disturbingly, consultants at the hospital had spotted a link between Lucy Letby and unexpected deaths and collapses a year before she was moved away from clinical duties. They say senior executives need to explain that lack of action and slow response. We'll hear what the Trust has to say on that after this from our reporter Emma Sweeney. It was the perfect backdrop for the nurse inclined to play God with the lives of the innocent. An NHS neonatal unit filled with assumptions of good intent. But for months, this predator invoked cries of concerns from senior colleagues and yet continued to go unchallenged. So just how was Lucy Letby able to get away with murder. In 2015, the neonatal ward at the Countess of Chester was operating as a Tier 2 unit. It provided short-term intensive care for sick and premature babies born between 27 and 32 weeks. But in June of that year, an unusual series of events was beginning to unfold. Three babies died unexpectedly within two weeks of each other and another collapsed. It would mark the start of a 12-month period which in total would see seven unexplained deaths and a further 10 babies suffering from sudden collapses. A nagging, growing suspicion developed, particularly amongst us consultant paediatricians, that something abnormal was happening. A jury would conclude that most of those abnormalities were down to Lucy Letby, whose murderous campaign claimed the lives of seven of those newborns and she attempted to murder six more. For months, her acts of sabotage had left the unit's consultants struggling to comprehend what was going on. I had never in my career seen anything like this. Never, ever. Um, not just the numbers, but how they were dying. It did not make sense. It didn't make sense because it wasn't normal. Now, during the trial, the prosecution would say a nurse who was once widely considered as dedicated and caring had in fact morphed into a constant malevolent presence. Lucy Letby would say she often was present, but that's because this was a unit that was understaffed and overstretched, and she was willing to pick up the slack. It was no secret this was a unit understaffed. In fact, in February of 2016, inspectors had raised this with hospital bosses. But in the case of today's guilty verdicts, the jury found hard to fill rosters were not to blame. It was Lucy Letby who had been flagged as a possible cause for concern with several members of the senior management team following a number of reviews, including the medical director and director of nursing. I believe, although I, I didn't uh, get involved personally with the discussions, that from the nursing side of the hospital, um, senior managers were being told it's just impossible, inconceivable, that one of the nurses on the unit, uh, Lucy Letby or anyone else, might be harming patients. But the former head of nursing for critical care who's asked us to protect her identity says there didn't appear to be any evidence of foul play at the time. The thematic review didn't come up with anything. And I don't recall even the subsequent internal investigations and the external ones that the executive team had commissioned 
there was no f factual evidence solely against Lucy Latby. And so the nurse continued to operate in plain sight. In court, Letby would insist she was a dedicated, caring and conscientious worker whose only crime was falling victim to a gang of four consultants intent on using her to cover up hospital failings. Lucy Letby was wrong. It wasn't a gang of four. It was seven, all the consultant paediatricians, not just four of us. It's normal to review your practice and when you have an increased number of deaths to discuss them together. It was the deaths and the unusual nature of the deaths that worried us. And yet, despite those worries, it wasn't until June of 2016, a year after the alarms were first sounded, when things finally came to a head. The following month, Letby was escorted off the unit. She was just looking at me as if to say, why? Her mantra was, I'm not going to be forced out of the job I love. I've done nothing wrong. And she kept saying this. She never changed that mantra. Following Letby's removal, a meeting was held between hospital executives and consultants. The very first thing that Tony Chambers, the chief executive, said to us, he cogitated for a few seconds and he said, well, I can see how that might be a very convenient explanation for things. Now, let's take a moment to think about that. We've just said to the chief executive of the hospital that we as a group of seven consultant paediatricians have got a serious concern that somebody could be causing deliberate harm to babies on our neonatal unit. And he tells us that he thinks that could be a con convenient explanation for us. And what that says to me is that he'd already decided that wasn't going on and this was us just trying to cover up. Do you think the hospital management, that they carry some blame for not acting sooner? I think they need to be asked and they need to justify uh, their decisions. Um, I know what we paediatricians were concerned about and those concerns were being fed through to the senior managers. The people who have been affected most have been the poor parents involved and to go through a long police investigation leading to a prolonged court case has been just agony for the families. Is there anything you want to add? That I'm sorry that Everything that's happened has taken time to be resolved. I only hope that we have found the truth at the end of this. Well, the government has now launched an inquiry saying vital lessons must be learned. Now that, as we heard there, leaves big questions for the hospital, especially for this man. He is the chief executive of the trust at the time. Tony Chambers has since left the Countess but has responded to criticism with a statement. He told us that Dr Jairam's comments give a one-sided account of their meeting and what he said has been taken out of context. He meant that a significant number of factors should be considered. He goes on to say his thoughts are with the children and their families at the heart of this case and he will cooperate fully with any post-trial inquiry. And as for the former medical director Ian Harvey, he also says his thoughts are with the babies whose treatment has been the focus of this case. He says he'll help an inquiry in whatever way he can. The Trust has refused to take questions from the media today, but they did record this a little earlier. I speak for the whole Trust when I say how deeply saddened and appalled we are at Lucy Letby's crimes. We are extremely sorry that these crimes were committed at our hospital. And our thoughts continue to be with all the families and loved ones of the babies who came to harm or who died. This case has had a profound impact on our patients and our local community and also our staff. So Emma, what do you make of that statement from the Trust today? Well, Lucy, that statement, quite a general statement, perhaps unsurprisingly. They haven't addressed any of those verdicts directly and nor have they addressed any of the concerns levelled against the hospital, some of which you heard about there in that piece. We know now that the government uh, is going to carry out an independent inquiry and that will look at the circumstances uh, of, 
around these murders and attempted murders. It will also uh, look at how the concerns raised by clinicians were dealt with and it will place the families at the very centre of this inquiry. They will be asked to shape it. Now this is a move today that was welcomed by the local MP Samantha Dixon who said the time was right to seek reassurances that nobody could perpetrate crimes as hideous as these again. Now, of course, at the very centre of this story are those babies, those families. But this is also a story that has affected people who work here at the hospital and people from Chester. It has been hanging over this city now for the best part of six years. And it will undoubtedly take time for people here to comprehend. Emma, thank you. Well, the questions will go on about how the babies could possibly have been murdered in plain sight in a busy hospital and whether any of them could have been saved. We, of course, will be asking many of those questions in the coming months. But as the Crown Prosecution Service said, these parents had to return home to empty baby rooms where their much-loved sons and daughters should have been. Those babies should be seven or eight years old by now enjoying their summer holidays. And many of the babies who survived had their lives and their families' lives changed forever. We'll leave you with the words of the families who said, we are heartbroken, devastated, angry and numb. We may never truly know why this happened. Our thoughts are with them this evening. Many Good thanks day. indeed for watching. Again. I'm scraping the cold oil into the bin, not the sink. Can we eat outside? It's nice. United Utilities sponsors ITV Granada Weather. Hello there, good evening to you. Storm Betty moves through tonight, bringing some wet and windy weather with a warning in force for very strong winds, particularly through the Irish Sea. South southwesterly gusts of 60, 70 miles an hour, so particularly affecting the Cumbrian coast, and widely wind speeds of 45, 50 miles an hour, which could be particularly dangerous because a lot of trees are in full leaf at the moment. There is some thundery activity embedded in all of that rain as well, but the worst of it clears away to Scotland by Saturday. A warm, humid, close feeling night, a dry start to Saturday, but then we're looking at sunny spells and blustery showers throughout the rest of the day, but nothing like it will be overnight tonight. That's it. Bye-bye. It's a little bit burnt. United Utilities sponsors ITV Granada Weather.